After building my YouTube channel to 300,000 subscribers over the last couple of years, there's a lot of things that I would do completely differently if I could start over again from scratch. And no, I'm not going to be giving you some absolutely cookie cutter advice like find your own niche and be consistent because you've probably heard those things thousands of times before, but I will actually try to give you a couple of pointers that you can do differently in the future to help you progress and grow faster that you never heard about before. So I really hope you're going to enjoy this video and find it valuable. My name is Vince and let's jump right into it. So the first thing I would do is I would actually find video ideas that are proven to work, that are validated, right? So what I mean by that is actually look at the top 10 to 15 competitor channels of yours who are also making content in the similar space and sort by videos by most viewed right and see what videos actually got the most amount of engagement the most amount of views on their channel and then you can go ahead and not actually watch those videos but just kind of like take inspiration from the topics and the titles that they used and there's nothing wrong with this in my opinion because this will help you to actually make videos and things that people are proven to be interested in but as long as you don't actually watch their videos, you're not going to be subconsciously copying their content. One of the biggest mistakes that I've made in the past is I've made a lot of videos about things that people don't care about, right? That nobody wants to watch. And if you can just avoid this main mistake that most beginner YouTubers make as well, you are going to be able to progress just way, way, way quicker. The second thing I would do is I would make videos that are longer than eight minutes. Now, the reason for this is obviously YouTube as a platform want to keep people on their platform for as long as humanly possible and not make them get off because the more time somebody spends on YouTube, the more ad impressions that they can get served and the more money YouTube makes or Google makes as a company, right? It makes sense if you think about it. So the longer videos you can make and the longer you can actually keep people on those videos, the more money not only you will make, but YouTube and Google as a company will make as well. So although they will never publicly say this, and I'm not 100% sure if this is true but i tend to find that videos that are over eight minutes long tend to be pushed out and get more views overall and basically videos that are more than eight minutes long can get more than one ad served in them right you can have pretty much as many ads as you want in those longer videos that are 15 20 30 minutes long so oftentimes you will see that some of the best performing content and some of the stuff that's on your home page is these longer style videos you know 15 20 30 minutes long sometimes even longer so that's something Thing I would personally be trying to aim for to not make you know three four minute videos but rather everything that's above eight so in the future once you get monetized you will not only be able to make more ad review but I think your videos will also get pushed out a lot more although again this is just Vince science it's not actually proven to be true now the third thing I would do differently is I would be creating my titles and my thumbnails before even making the video now most people do it completely the other way around who are just starting out in YouTube, right? What most people do is they will shoot a video and uh, it's going to be on some sort of topic that they wanted to talk about. And then the title of the video and the thumbnail is just completely an afterthought, right? It's just something that they will try to come up with and try to do the best thing they can. Now, what the professionals do is they will actually come up with the title first and they will make a thumbnail for it even. Make sure it is really good packaging. Make sure it's really appealing for people to click on. And only then they make the video, right? And this might seem a little bit weird to you, but if you think about it, it doesn't matter how much time you actually put into creating an amazing video and, you know, editing it for hours and hours and shooting it in different locations if nobody watches it. So packaging on this platform is super important. And the two main components of it is your title and your thumbnail, right? So you want to put more effort into those if you want to see success. So the fourth thing I would do differently is I wouldn't be building a quote unquote split following. Now, now, what I mean by that is even on my channel, I've kind of built two separate audiences, so to say. I've built an audience that's really interested in video editing and content creation. Some of them only Photoshop because I made a lot of those type of tutorials. And I've also built a business audience. And this is kind of a little bit of a regret that I have from the past. Not that there's anything wrong with this. A lot of these people also overlap, but I did kind of create two separate audiences within my subscriber base. So whenever I upload a video that's one 
type or the other, you know, a lot of that audience is not going to interact with it based on which camp they are in. And so this is, in my opinion, not super healthy for a channel and I would advise you against it. So what I would advise you to do instead is, you know, if you have to make videos in super, super different topics, then maybe just create two separate channels for it. But I'd rather have a channel that's a bit smaller and, you know, that has just a super engaged core audience, which wants to see every new video that comes out rather than have 10 times more subscribers that is split into a bunch of these little base camps and that are not going to be interested in every video that comes out based on whatever topic it is going to be in. Then the fifth thing I would do differently is I would really focus on not getting copyright striked or copyright claimed in my content. If you ever use songs, even sound effects sometimes, or just footage that you are not supposed to be using, you don't have the rights to, you can easily get number one monetization taken away from you, but you can even get copyright striked on your channel. And if you get three strikes, you're out, you get your channel terminated. And it's not a fun thing to do. I have gotten copyright strikes in the past. So whenever you're using music, whenever you are using footage, you want to make sure that it's something that you have the rights to use. And that brings us to the sponsor of today's video, Epidemic Sound. Now, Epidemic Sound is a platform that I've been using for well over five years at this point. And that's the place where I get all of my songs and sound effects from, because basically they offer a subscription where you just pay a small monthly fee and you get unlimited amount of song downloads and sound effect downloads as well. Now, because you don't have to individually license all the different songs, which could potentially cost you thousands of dollars, this also allows you to save a bunch of money. Now, they have an incredibly huge library of really high quality songs and sound effects and some really advanced search features as well, which will allow you to find the exact type of vibe that you are going for in your own video. I also love the stem downloads feature where you can literally get the different layers, so to say, of a song, and it allows you to have full creative freedom over how you use it. And they even have this feature where you can change the duration of a song to whatever you want it to be. So if you have a four minute song, you can change it to be a 20 second song if that's what you need for your edit. But anyways, the best thing for you to do is to actually try them out for yourself, which you can do in the first link in the description for a free trial. Thank you Epidemic for sponsoring this video and let's get back to the tips. Now, the sixth thing that I would do differently is I would first just try to focus on getting comfortable in front of the camera. Now, I'm gonna tell you this, with quite a high certainty. Unless you are someone who's naturally really good at talking to the camera, which there are some people like that, but most likely your first even 25 to 50 videos are going to feel really weird, right? It's going to feel unnatural to you. And that is completely normal. I was definitely not someone who was a natural in front of the camera. Even if you go on my channel and you sort it by the oldest videos, you will be able to see some videos that I did at 16, 15, 14 years old. and. Just just how uncomfortable I was in front of the camera. And those were like my hundredth video. I had multiple channels even before this one, right? So what I'm just trying to say is if you can reframe your first 50 videos in your mind as like, okay, these first 50 videos are just me learning the skill of being able to talk to a camera and, you know, just feel comfortable in front of it. It's going to make it a lot easier because then you won't have these huge expectations of wanting to blow up on your first or second video. And hey, if it happens, Happens, that's amazing, but you shouldn't be going into it with that kind of mindset because then you are just setting yourself up for failure. What I like to do is I like to talk to the camera as if I was just talking to a friend of mine who's sitting in front of me, right? So even when I do tutorials or educational content, I try to always explain things as if I was just trying to explain it to a friend of mine who doesn't know how to do the certain thing. Now, the seventh thing I would do differently is when it comes to editing, I would just focus on mastering the basics first instead of going to the advanced stuff off the bat. So a lot of people, when they start YouTube, right, they want to do all the advanced animations and graphics, and they want to get straight into After Effects, right? And they haven't even mastered Premiere Pro or just fundamental editing, like cutting, pacing, you know, using sound effects and music correctly, adding B-roll in a nice way, having just nice clean cuts, clean transitions, right? And they immediately start wanting to make the really advanced things, right? And what that often leads to is it will just make 
make your videos look more amateurish because you are building on a really not solid foundation, right? You haven't got your fundamental skills really locked in yet. So what I would do in the beginning is instead of wanting to do all the advanced stuff, just focus on the basics first, right? And make sure you are really good at that. Make sure you practice those things a lot and only then start introducing more advanced things like crazy animations or effects or this and that, right? Because oftentimes it will do more harm for you than it helps if you aren't building on a solid foundation first. Now, the eighth thing I would do differently is I would not wait so long to start monetizing through things like affiliate links and creating an own community of mine, right? Once I start to get views. Now, this is something that I really regret because I literally missed out on more than $100,000 of just pure profit by not using affiliate links earlier. I had some Adobe Premiere Pro videos that started doing really well in like 2020, right? And well, basically on the first like 2 million views I got on my channel or 3 million views, I didn't have any sort of affiliate links or any sort of monetization structure in place. And I'm not saying you need to do that right from the beginning because then it can come off kind of weird. But once your channel starts blowing up, don't wait too long to start monetizing it because you could be literally missing out on two, five, ten thousand dollars a month in revenue. And the thing is, like, if you're monetizing through affiliate links or you have a great community that you are building and you're actually adding value to people, your audience is not going to mind you doing that, right? As long as you are providing also great quality education and content for free, why would anyone not want to support you by, let's say, buying the software through your affiliate link instead of someone else's? And another last bonus tip I would say is consistency is key. Now, I know I said in the beginning that I'm not going to say any of these boring, very cliche advices, but to be fair, it is really true. Once I really started staying more consistent with my uploads, that's why my channel actually started taking off and getting way more views and way more subscribers. So it is something that I thought I would also mention because I don't want to have you overlook that as well. So anyways, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you want to learn more about how to grow on YouTube, how to edit amazing videos and how to maybe even get clients for video editing through the skill of learning freelancing. So you can either do this for yourself, grow your own brand or for someone else. You can also check out my monthly membership community in the description below. And otherwise, I really hope you enjoy this. I hope you got some value from it. Let me know if there was anything in here that you are going to be able to actually start implementing for your own channel as well. I would love to hear in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this, then make sure to stick around. We have some more videos like this coming up as well in the future. And I will see you in the next one.